Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be catching women in lies about other men. If you're in a relationship with a woman and you find her or you catch her lying about other guys, lying about other exes, or lying about men she's interacting with, and you're in a relationship and you really care, it's like that is not a place you want to be. That is not a lot of fun. Because the reality is when you see somebody for who they really are and it turns out that they're not living up to the expectations that you had and you know deep down you got to pull the plug, it sucks. It's not pleasant because it's going to sting. And the reality is finding people who are good to you, good for your soul, who are easy going, easy to get along with, effortless to be around. They're so rare and hard to come by. And so when you find somebody who is almost all of those things consistently and it turns out that they're lying and they're devious, it's it sucks. It's the worst thing. Even though you recognize and you see what you have to do, it's not a fun thing to have to end things with somebody when they show you that they have no character. But like Maya Angelou used to say, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them the first time. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we'll go through his email. The quote says, liars lie and there's not much you can do to change or influence them to be better. People who lie about little things lie about the big things also. It's not your job to change, fix, or save broken or dishonest people. Once somebody reveals their true character through their actions, you should believe them and act accordingly. People who constantly display a total lack of integrity only get better at hiding that lack of integrity as they get older. They typically don't change. That's a tough pill to swallow. So let's go through his email. He says, hi coach, I really need your help to understand what has just happened. Hopefully you can make sense of it because I'm confused as hell. Let me backtrack and give you some history on how I came to find your work. I was married and together with my ex-wife for 17 years. We had two kids who I adore and cherish, and it has been my mission in life to be a present and outstanding father to them. Good for you, dude. That's what men should focus on. The last five years of my marriage was awful, and I wanted out so badly, but I could not leave as the thought of being apart from my children was too painful to bear. I instead decided to suffer. And unfortunately, a lot of guys make that same choice because they're hoping that it's going to be good for the children. But at the end of the day, pragmatically, kids are going to follow what you do, not what you say. And if you're displaying a dysfunctional family relationship at home, that's what your kids are going to emulate when they grow up. If you're cool with that, then by all means, stick with it. It's your life. It's your choice. They're your children. But if not, then you're going to have to do the harsh things because the best thing you can do for your children is give them good examples to follow. The kind of relationships and the kind of people you want them to have and associate with, you got to have those in your own life as well. Because again, they're not going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to do what you show them. That's just reality. Kids model their parents doesn't matter whether the example is good or bad. The kids are going to model what the parents teach them. Eventually, my ex-wife's behavior became so bad with affairs and constant lying that I threw her out of the house. So this is the interesting thing about the way the universe tends to work. If you've got a blind spot or a weakness and you consistently attract people into your life who have no integrity, like in this case, he wanted to stay with his wife for the sake of the kids – But the cheating and the lying didn't end. It was constant. That's who she was. And eventually, she crossed the Rubicon, if you will. She she crossed the line, and finally, he had had enough. He had enough pain. He says, divorce followed, and I see my children on a seven-day rotation. Three months after separating, I joined Tinder and Bumble, not knowing my own worth, and waited to see what happened. So like I was starting to say, the way the universe tends to work is that He's drawn a woman into his life, his wife, who had no integrity, who was a liar and a cheater. And obviously there's some kind of blind spot there where he notices his behavior, but he makes excuses for people. And so typically 
it doesn't stop happening until you are consistent in booting those people out of your life. And you'll see once I get to the situation with his current girlfriend that it's until you transcend, transcend something or you till you overcome or transcend the weakness or the blind spot that you have, you're going to keep attracting those same kind of people into your life so you can overcome it. He says, I was gobsmacked at the amount of likes I got and I wanted two coffee dates with two different women, both of whom told me at the end of the date they wanted to see me again. Things progress. Notice it was only two, the first two women. After how many years? Let me see. Where was it? 17 years he was married and together with his ex-wife. And so he got serious with one of the two first women that he went out with instead of taking his time. Things progressed click quickly with one of these women and before long, we were an item. However, I overlooked so many red flags and crazy behavior thinking I could fix her. So there's, there's his flaw. There's his weakness. I can fix her. I can work with this. Because after 17 years, he's thinking, man, it'd just be nice to have something good because he was miserable for so long. And unfortunately, what happens is those guys attract a woman who is similar in character, but maybe she's better at hiding it. And then they make excuses. No, I can't be. It can't be the same kind of person. There's no way it could happen again to me. God's got a sense of humor. It messed me up quite badly as I got attached and the sex was wild. It was after this crazy relationship of six months was over that I discovered your work and became a disciple of your teaching. It was obvious that I was a novice and needed a lot of help. I have lost count of how many times I have read and listened to 3% Man, and I also listened to Mastering Yourself frequently. So 3% Man, in my second book, Mastering Yourself, you can read both these for free by subscribing to the newsletter on my website, and you can read Quotes, Ruminations, and Contemplations for free there as well. And then buy it if you're so inclined. Your work has totally changed my life, improved me as a person, and I've never been happier in myself due to your work and getting some therapy to deal with problems I had following my divorce. Fast forward four years and my success with women, my self-esteem and my self-confidence is now at a level that I could never have imagined. Well, as the saying goes, pride cometh before the fall. That's why it's always better to be humble. Another thing Jocko Willing says that I love and totally agree with, he says, be humble or you will be humbled. And as Confucius said, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. I noticed like when I was around 20, early 30s and very successful, that shit goes to your head and you kind of start to think that you're infallible and you're amazing and you're better than everybody else around you. And then as soon as you start thinking that way, karma comes along and just beats the shit out of you. That's life. So it's better to be humble and let other people sing your praises about how great you are. However, earlier this year, I got tired of hooking up with women. I did date one woman exclusively for a year, actually finding it a turnoff and not a thrill. I would regularly not schedule a second date with women who showed an interest in me unless I was blown away by them. So almost never. Before this, I would be excited at the thought of adding another notch to the bedpost. Yeah, it's like just sleeping around, sleeping with women you don't feel anything for, don't care about, and you don't want to ever see them again after you have sex. It really is like glorified masturbation. You don't believe me? Go experience it yourself, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I took a break for several months and decided that the time was right to find someone who I wanted as a partner and not just a fling. This summer, I went on a first date, a coffee, and walk around the reservoir with a girl I met on Bumble. Immediately, I was struck by how enthusiastic and effortless our conversation was. It just flowed. She was more attractive in person than in her pictures, and we sat on a bench watching the sun go down, going down over the water in the evening sunshine. The attraction and connection was like nothing else I had experienced yet. At the end of the walk, I gave her a hug, and she kissed me on the cheek, telling me that she hoped we would go out again. I told her that I was sure we would, and we said our goodbyes. He says, note, I don't kiss a girl on coffee dates. I always do that on the first proper evening and drink dates. Whatever. Your choice. Do what you want. I always go for the kiss, though. It's better to find out right away where you're at. 
I prefer meeting for coffee first to prevent wasting time and money on someone who I don't like. That's understandable when you're doing exclusively online dating because you haven't met the person in person and you really haven't interacted enough to get to know them, especially even if you're talking on the phone or you're doing a video date or a video chat. Several days later, I called her and she later told me this blew her away. Yeah, it's pretty rare these days for a guy to pick up the phone and call. It shows you have a lot of confidence. I get the same response. Like, wow, you called. Nobody does that. And we set a date for an evening dinner in about a week's time after our return from vacation. She kept texting me all the time and I would send the occasional funny response. The date was amazing, continuing on from where we had left off. And we spent hours after dinner walking around the city getting ice cream and having additional drinks. I kissed her over a glass of wine and eventually walked her back to her car to say goodbye along with a five-minute tongue sandwich. Nice. Four months later, she has displayed everything that I would want. She doesn't hassle me or get upset when I'm too busy to see her, accepting that I can't see her as much as she wants, but always accepting the various kinds of dates that I regularly suggest. She also accepts that she cannot meet my children until at least six months have passed. That's probably a good policy to have, especially, which you'll see in a minute, it's a really good policy to have when you got kids. Because you don't want to be constantly introducing new women to your kids, and then the kids are like, well, what happened to so-and-so? Like, ah, it didn't work out. Or, ah, she was a liar. Ah, she did this. It's better to only introduce the women who prove themselves worthy over a minimum of six months or even a year. We also run together and just this weekend entered our first race. She really seems to have her life together and be in a good place to date. I told my friends that I haven't seen any red flags with this girl and that I like her a lot. She does 95% of the calling and texting, tells me that the sex is hands down the best of her life, and she's a hellcat in the bedroom. I really couldn't ask for anything better. The only small issues have been her trying to plan events together for way off in the future but I just put this down to her enthusiasm and attraction. Well, obviously she sees a future with you. So that's a good sign. It's a sign of high interest. She also has a difficult relationship with her parents, although they are in regular contact and her ex-husband doesn't mu want much to do with her kids. That's sad, but it happens a lot. One other point is that despite telling me frequently that she adored me, was smitten with me, etc. She didn't tell me that she loved me until week 12, the latest anybody has done. She has now said it just twice, and we have been together for four months. She also told me that she never once told her previous boyfriend that she loved him despite dating for 12 months. She told me they had split six months before we met. I don't do too much of social media, but just last week I went on, a, went on to Instagram and had a look at her profile. Her ex-boyfriend was liking several of her posts and she in return was liking and commenting on his, including one just last week when she added hearts to her message as he had achieved a certification. Well, that's interesting. Interesting intel. You got to remember, you're kind of like Sherlock Holmes. You're vetting this person just because everything's been great for four months. Remember, people can hide who they are for about 90 days. And then the slip-ups happen because you just spend so much time together, the real them comes out. And that's why you really can't, especially in a long-term situation like this, you really can't make a, an intelligent, informed decision unless you've at least been together for 6 to 12 months. I didn't read too much into it. I, have, I too have connections on social media to several women I have dated. Then just last night, we were talking after dinner at her place and she told me she could not be friends with exes on social media and preferred her life private so exes can't see what she's doing. Huh. Imagine that. Looked him right in the eye and told him a total lie. But it gets better. But wait, there's more. I said to her, you aren't connected to your exes? She said, nope. I said, but I've seen your ex liking your post just recently. She replied, really? I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I said, but your comments and likes are all over his page. 
She said, ah, but his page is public and mine is private, so he can't see my stuff. Huh? I said, wait just a second. In that case, he wouldn't be able to like your posts. She replied, well, we were connected a ways back, but not for several months. Remember, this is all right to his face. This is what's interesting because he noticed a little bit of intel and he's like, oh, maybe she's got it on good terms with her ex. So he brings it up and or she volunteers, oh, I don't stay in touch with any of my exes. But obviously from what he saw, he knew that was a lie. This is why you vet people. You really don't know who you're dealing with. You're just buying who they're trying to, the version of themselves that they're trying to sell you. And, you know, guys get four months down the road, and by this point, they're usually in la-la land. I'm in my soulmate. It's, oh, well, it's just one lie. It'll be okay. It's not a big deal. It's just one. Okay, maybe ten little lies in sequence, but hey, it's just one time. I pulled out Instagram and showed her posts. That, so keep in mind, he knows what's really going on, and she's continuing to lie about it. So he says, I pulled out Instagram and showed her posts that showed there had been plenty of interaction, and she suddenly changed her story. <gasps> She was confronted with facts. <laughs> I told her she was digging a hole for herself and she came up to me and started passionately kissing me. Wow, that's a pattern interrupt. She's trying to change the subject. Not good. I was like a block of stone. I told her, I'm calling bullshit on all of this. You should come clean and stop lying to me as it now looks like you have something to hide. Yeah. She said she was very sorry about lying and thought I would get the wrong idea. That's why she lies. And so I've had conversations with I had conversations with people that used to work for me and I was continually catching them in little lies and they're worried that they're not going to be loved and accepted by other people. And the reality is when that's somebody's model of the world and all of their decisions are based upon that and you catch them in a lie, people don't change their belief system until it's becomes invalid or no longer works and since it works with most people they're going to keep doing it and if they're adults especially the older they get they're not going to change you have to decide are you okay with being lied to constantly and if you are then hey by all means stick around me personally i don't put up with that shit you can go on down the road adios chica no mas I told her I cannot be with a liar, that I liked her a lot, but she cannot lie to me like this. She said she was terribly sorry and it will never happen again. Oh, sure. By now, my spidey senses and alarms were going off inside of my head. I asked her if something had happened and I noticed she had unfollowed him on Instagram. So this must have just happened this week. She continued to deny everything and asked to talk it through. What's there to talk through when you bust somebody into lying and they continue lying when confronted with it? And it's obvious she's not going to tell him the story because she's worried what he's going to think. We tried, but nothing makes sense. She is definitely hiding something. Well, if her story doesn't add up and you just caught her in a bunch of lies, you have to assume that anything she told you about this guy is bullshit. And when that happens, if you can't believe anything she tells you, She's disqualified. You don't want a woman like this because this guy's ex, the mother of his children is a liar just like this. And so now he's attracted to somebody. It's basically the same person. And so he's trying to present a good, healthy example of a woman with honor and integrity. And so when you find out somebody is a habitual liar and they're devious – well, it's great that he's got that policy of you can't meet my kids for six months because she made it to month four before we found out what she really was all about. So therefore, she belongs in the streets. I don't have my mug, but she belongs in the streets. Disqualified. It's harsh, but nope. There's no coming back from that. She insisted there was nothing going on and eventually we went to bed. I could not sleep, so I told her I was going home and that she should get some sleep. This morning, she reached out asking to talk it through with me, and I have set a call with her for tomorrow night. I'm really in a daze about this. It's the first time we had any crossed words. 
I really thought I had mastered this and had a tight game, but it looks like I may have been deluding myself. I just don't know what to think or do. I hope you can help me figure it out and explain what you see from this. Well, like Maya Angelou said, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them the first time. So she's a liar. You divorced your ex-wife because she was a liar. This new girlfriend is lying to you about an ex that she's interacting with and flirting with openly on social media. What does that tell you? This hoe ain't loyal. That's the bottom line. And so the universe has brought you basically the same kind of person. With your wife, you tolerated it. Therefore, you continually invited it. And with this woman, here's your challenge as a man. I'm going to nip this shit in the bud. That's it. Deal breaker. You're out. Back, back to the drawing board. Or you can make excuses and rationalize and carry it on for a few more months and say, okay, well, we made, she made it to six months, so now I'm going to introduce her to my kids. And then who knows? Maybe she's sleeping with this guy. Maybe she's sleeping with other dudes. When there's other men involved like this and she's lying to you about it, especially like an ex, it's not worth it. And this is how the universe works. It's harsh, but you got to get the message. You got to get the lesson here. And the lesson is, is that as soon as you find out they're a liar and they're devious, they're gone. They have to be. Because otherwise, this is what you're going to bring home to your children. And this is what you're going to teach your children. And you already, the children already have their mother teaching them to be a liar and be devious. But you're the man. And as your kids get older, they will appreciate you operating from a place of integrity. Because operating from a place of, integri place of integrity versus being a dirtbag like the ex-wife is and like this particular woman is is what your kids need. Your kids need to recognize that people with low integrity, that lie, that are devious, should be booted out of your life. And so therefore, as they get older, they recognize that their mother's a liar and that she's devious. And as they get older and they're more mature, they can hold the mother accountable and call her out on her lies and her bullshit and her deviousness and her cheating and everything else. Because she's whoever she's with now, she's probably doing it to him as well. So, and what this can do is ingratiate your children to you and then they look to you for your leadership because you're the righteous one. You're the one who's setting an example of honor. And that's what your children need. So for the sake of your children and yourself, obviously, I pull the plug. I kick her to the curb. No second chances for this behavior. Because this woman looked you right in the eye and smiled and just lied like it was nothing. And the reason she's so good at it is because she's been doing it for her whole life. And you, she was like this before you met her. But again, this is why you vet. So you can disqualify people who don't belong in your life. So if you've got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.